Hi, my name is Dr. Armand Kalsa. I am an assistant professor of orthopedic spine surgery here at the University of Pennsylvania. I have practice locations downtown at 3737 Market Street, uh, out in Radnor, Pennsylvania, and in Exon, PA in Chester County. I did my undergraduate training at Johns Hopkins University, medical school at Tulane University, and internship and residency at Drexel in Philadelphia. As far as specific interests within spine, uh, it runs the entire gambit of small, minimally invasive procedures to large, complex deformity, uh, any and all comers, both operative and non-operative management. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about virtual versus in-person spine second opinions. And second opinions are so valuable in spine surgery just because, you know, spine surgery is a big deal. And, and that's coming from a spine surgeon, okay? And so even when I'm recommending patients uh, that may benefit from surgery, I always encourage them to get a second opinion because I think the more uh, physicians and minds you have uh, that are, you know, either confirming uh, or validating, uh, you know, that that plan, I think it's it's the better for uh, patient care. Okay, um, you know, it really allows patients to make sure they're getting the best treatment option for them. Uh, and sometimes patients come to us uh, with a recommendation for surgery, and we can have. Uh, some non-surgical treatment options for them to, to hopefully avoid surgery altogether. And that's not too infrequent. So I, I really encourage second opinions, uh, you know, in my practice. So another question that comes up frequently is, you know, how do I know if I should come in person uh, or, or have a virtual spine second opinion? Uh, you know, and a follow-up to that, you know, is there any reason why someone couldn't be a candidate for a virtual second opinion? And, and I'll say this, you know, we've really been utilizing uh, virtual second opinions uh, a lot now, particularly in light of the, the recent pandemic. And, you know, most, if not all, new patients are really candidates for a virtual second opinion. Um, a, a lot of what we can do in, in that format can be really helpful and you know that we've had a lot of success uh, with our recent experience uh, you know another question that comes up is uh, you know what is the difference between a virtual and in-person second opinion and I'll tell you that we can get a lot a lot done through virtual telemedicine right now um, you know the biggest drawback uh, is that you know obviously we can't do a physical examination but we can get so much information between hearing your story, getting a good history, um, and evaluating your imaging, which we can do remotely, and kind of discussing potential plans. And if needed, then at that point, we can decide, all right, well, you need to come into the office to get a physical examination. And, and um, you know, that's been a really helpful and useful workflow uh, for, for a lot of patients uh, coming in for second opinions right now. Uh, another question that comes up, you know, is there anything else specific to spine second opinions during COVID uh, that might be helpful for patients. And, and I'll just say, in general, we really stress, you know, take care of yourself. Don't let this whole pandemic, um, uh, you know, have you neglect your underlying spinal disorders, um, you know, uh, because of this virtual second opinion format, we really have the opportunity to treat a lot of patients um, and, and uh, provide them the care they need in a safe and responsible manner. So just to sum things up, uh, spine second opinions are always valuable and don't need to be taken off the table entirely or even delayed because of COVID. If you feel more comfortable having your, uh, your visit virtually, that is always an option and it's a great option. We are able to get you in or schedule you a virtual visit quickly so you can get the best care possible without having to wait uh, while you're in pain and you're suffering. All right, take care.